Hello everyone, this is a new recording. I have uh, recorded the past week and it's a long game between Javer, Yever and Framer. Uh, both are relatively new, again, it's a new match. But it's going to be a really long match and it's going to be a test for us to see if we can upload long videos now. Because recently we, we received a message from uh, YouTube that we can now actually record videos up to a few hours of length. So I'm uh, really curious if that would work out. So we will see. But uh, these guys are relatively new, like I said. I haven't played many games yet, but uh, I decided to pitch them against each other. Just see where it goes. So maybe I can discuss some uh, noob mistakes and some noob strats gone wrong and comment on that. Now the first thing I see in the Harkonnen base, well I'm not I'm not actually looking there now because uh, this is a voiceover from a previous recording. But I noticed that the wind trap, his first building, was not on concrete. That's fine, you can do that. If you want to pump out stuff really fast, don't take the micromanagement for your base management to make some concrete. You can choose not to put concrete on it, but if you don't, there will be uh, your buildings will det deteriorate faster, which means, uh, in terms of a wind trap, that its power output will be lower, and you will have to repair it more often, which makes it costlier. So. Especially with wind traps, I would always recommend concrete under underneath because uh, they're so vit vital for your uh, base operations. Power is everything. If you don't have uh, electric power, you can just uh, quit right there because uh, you will get stuck eventually. And other buildings, more crucial buildings, will not operate, such as uh, House of X, rocket turrets, palaces, production facilities, you name it. If you, as you already saw just from the Harkonnen base a few seconds ago, one of his power refineries was already unpowered. I know if he would have uh, put the wind trap on a on a concrete grid, it would be powered because it could, was would be very much able to uh, supply three buildings. So that's what I'm trying to comment here. So there's already some mining, and the Harkonnen has its first harvest returning, which means he can now uh, make additional tech choices, a, p uh, a path of base building he can follow now. Uh, <coughs> perhaps he will open up with a, a war factory, for, for another war factory, war facility for troopers, or maybe he gets additional additional uh, spice refineries or uh, a light vehicle factory. We will see. So the same goes for the Atreides. He has two 2x2 uh, two two grids. So, I sp maybe a uh, outpost. Uh, also the Arconin has two 2x2 two two grids, very, very uh, clear to see that. So perhaps a uh, another wind trap and an outpost, or a wind trap and some production facility for military units. That's also an opening you can go for, but usually I always try to go for an outpost ASAP, so that I can get a carry-all ASAP, because as soon as the first worm sign hits, you want carry all support, so you, uh, so your harvesters don't have to move on the sand as much, because uh, if they do, they will definitely attract worms. It's almost impossible to navigate your harvesters during worm sign. It's just stupid. You, you sh yeah, ah, there you go. That's the high tech factory for the Harkonnen, and he probably just got announced that there's going to be worm sign, so he pulled them all back, all his harvesters, trying to get some money out quick. I guess it's going to pop up any second now. And the Atreides hmm, is not getting a high-tech factory. Is that wise? Not so sure. Maybe if he goes for some, for some early pressure build, could be worth it, but not too sure. Ah, he goes for a light-tech, uh, light vehicle factory, so he could get some trikes. Uh, quads he cannot get yet, because he has uh, Atreides technology which only allows quads to be built after researching quad technology or upgrading to quads, whatever you want to call that. But in this game, you need a House of X. All the uh, upgrades are centralized in the House of X instead of uh, the, uh, the um, production facility itself. So in order to upgrade anything, you need a House of X. So you will 
normally see players rushing to the house of X after they get the carry all uh, out, but uh, it's always wise to get a production facility of some sort. And as you can see, it's now a uh, worm sign indeed, and the Harkonnen player can still, at some risk, but definitely worth it, continue mining operations. And that's because of the carry all, but the Harkonnen should not do this. Because uh, I'm afraid, yeah, there you have it. Ooh, the worm just missed him. He was quite lucky there. Ah, oh, he gets a house of X. I'm very uh, curious to see what he's getting. <coughs> well, here you see a display. You can easily, when you play this game and you're connected to our Steam group, you can just use the overlay from Steam to chat with people. It's really convenient. Ah, the Hakonin is sending out some quads to do some initial scouting. Perhaps see if they can poke at some weak point in their base, in the Atreides base, of course. Which is very, very well possible, because uh, he doesn't have anything out yet. And he also skipped the carry off, so what's his benefit now? He cannot mine, and, and he has no units, because there's no money, because of the shitty mining that he's going through now. He cannot mine properly. Um, worm sign is now over, but the, you see the quads, they're attacking that building under construction. Which uh, which is nice, that uh, also halts construction. When, uh, when a building under construction takes damage, you cannot repair it, you cannot continue to construct it. So it's nice. But that quad should not attack the conyard, because the conyard has a cannon inside it, or some bomb it throws. And this is really funny. The funniest noob mistake I've ever seen. He's making flag trikes, thinking that a uh, flag that sounds awesome. Let's make some flag trikes, but not realizing uh, that flag trikes only attack ornithopters, carrioles, and the feared devastator doom drops that the Harkonnen can pull on you. But he should not make those uh, right now, unless he is going straight to the enemy harvesting operations and tries to shoot down a carry all. That would be good if he would just just see now, as after I give him the instruction in the chat, which you see, don't do this, or use them for anti air. He should now just pull them up and find carry alls, Harkonnen harvests, whatever. Try to shoot some down. That would that would give him an an advantage, because now he's in a severe disadvantage. He's not playing too well, but. Uh, just see how this goes, but just leaving your flag strikes there doesn't do anything good for you. The Arconan is at a, at a very, very big advantage now. Economy-wise, technology-wise, size of base-wise, lol. Uh, yes, very much ahead indeed. The Atreides player, I, I thought for a second there that he was going to get a high-tech facility also. But he's going straight to a heavy vehicle. <coughs> now that other noob guy, Framer, who is actually pretty good, um, a good player, um, he says, uh, I can build a house of X, but I know he can. He's just uh, not paying att attention. So we're talking about it a bit. But uh, I know he just placed one, but it it wasn't powered. He didn't have enough power plants or wind traps, so that's why uh, why uh, he thinks it's unavailable. But actually, it is available. Ah, there was a blank in the screen. Uh, it's a big recording, so some parts may be not so good. I had to recover it with uh, fix diffix something some sort of program. And I'm also instructing the Atreides player uh, at this m moment or later when you get sonic tanks you need a power surplus because every sonic tank takes about 15 power to operate because it's an electric vehicle its attack uses electric power or something at least that's a mechanic and that's nice because sonic tanks are really powerful but you have to have the, the base to support them As you see now, all his sonic tanks, including his house of X, is unpowered. He needs more power plants. So I'm trying to tell him that. And uh, it's funny that that one little turret there is actually fending off the quad raid now. And 
Um, also, one thing the Atreides could do now is just play some concrete there, so the harvesters go faster. You see, Whoop, he goes faster on the concrete. So that's uh, that's something he could do, just to speed it up a bit. Seeing he hasn't uh, any, uh, he hasn't got any uh, carryalls out yet. Every little bit helps. I always concrete everything there, just to make uh, things go smoother. But he has some sonic tanks now. Now he got additional power, so uh, he can finally use the sonic tanks. giving out some basic instructions. They all know the mechanics of uh, RTS. When you build a base, you get some money, get some units and do some harassment and try to eliminate your opponent. But I'm trying to teach him a bit of the tricks, tips and tricks, because that's what I do with new players. I try to introduce him and get him warmed up. See uh, ah, see, see, see how they pick up. But you can al already tell the Harkonnen is at an extreme advantage. And that's all thanks to his carry-all. The carry-all makes all the difference, because now it's Wormstein. You see those two harvesters are returning. I bet that they won't make it back. Oh, that one is lucky. This one we see now is lucky. He actually made it back without being eaten. The other one, not so lucky. Here you go. Mostly they will attract worms. Bye-bye, full harvester. That's 700 credits lost. That's that's building time for new harvester. That's harvesting time lost. Carry-alls make all the difference. They allow you to continue mining or spice harvesting while worm sign is up at minimal risk while if you there goes another harvester I'm sure yeah he got scooped off the edge that's uh, very very unwise of him to continue moving on the sand because uh, more harvesters will be eaten and when you have a carry out uh, a carry the harvester actually knows when a when a worm is uh, chasing him and he gives out a signal and then he gets a quick pickup which n usually saves his life. Because think of all the poor harvester drivers, you know, you, you, you have your task, do your mining operations, and you have no support. That's, that's, that's too bad. These guys have families too, probably. Well, not the Harkonnen ones. They're, uh, they're all bred in some uh, pod or something I've, I've once heard. But the Atreides ones have families, I know for sure. So that's, that's, that's sad. You see, uh, many, many uh, harvesters are being pulled back just in time, so they can give some revenue. And the Harkon players also get have just built a a palace. Oh, this is dumb. You should not move your MCV. Oh, worm sign is over. I didn't say anything. But it's safe to move it now. He's trying to expand because his rock selection was quite shitte. Um, Harkonnen is uh, really, really having a military advantage economy advantage, everything. But we'll just see how this plays out. Because he already has Devastators, which are extremely strong. They do a lot of damage. But they fire really slowly, so you they also have a weak point. They're just not a spam Devastators win is win unit. Doesn't work like that. But I think now that uh, the Atreides has its sec second uh, Second construction uh, yard. He also also got just got the concrete upgrade, which allows uh, concrete to be built automatically. Just helps a bit. It's cheap. I always get it ASAP. But we will now see a push from the Harkonnen, who, uh, who has scouted and sensed his extreme advantage over the Atreides. <coughs> so a push is worth it. Just see where this goes. He has seven devastators. They could easily. If he would drop them in now with a carry-all, it would be GG. But like like I said, they're noobs. Now you see the concrete in between the refineries. It helps uh, the, the harvesters uh, move faster. Always do that. Always do that. That's my advice. It just helps a bunch. This uh, this uh, flashing of the screen with the the, the grayish uh, color that means that a sandstorm has passed. That's a mechanic in this RTS. Uh, remake. Uh, basically it resets the fog of war, because in the original June, June 2, if you scout, if you scout a patch, it, it, it's, it remains scouted forever. And in, in uh, modern RTS that's that's very uncommon, because that's just, you always know what's coming, and that, that's, that doesn't help the gameplay at all. It just, nah, it's not good. 
but the Atreides is making a slight comeback. Um, he has some sonic tanks. He now gets his carry-all after I was urging him to. So he finally sees that's what he needs. Now getting a carry-all, but the Harkonnen, if he were to push right now with the heavy vehicles, that would be a win. I'm, pr I'm sure. I'm getting an uh, Atreides is getting extra refineries. If he can keep this up, he uh, he might he might do something with that. He might have some benefits. Also note that that one lonely turret in the uh, Atreides base is uh, doesn't have a concrete slab underneath. At this point, if I was the Atreides player and I would have done that earlier, I would demolish it because it would just eat credits from the repairs. I would demolish it, place a concrete slab, and, and rebuild it. Or rebuild it elsewhere. But, as you can see, the carryalls are now out, and it makes such a huge difference. Not only does it protect from worms, but also the, the, uh, the speed at which the harvesters go back and forth from spice field to refinery is exponentially increased. Always go straight to carryalls if you want a shot at winning the game. Um, basic build order is when you, you start with 1500 credits is uh, get your conyard, get a wind trap, get three refineries. When the first refineries return you can choose to either get another refinery or go straight through to another wind trap, an outpost, a high-tech factory with your first carryall. That's, that's basically my build order but uh, and many others because uh, it just works well. It works wonders. This is funny. The Harkonnen has such a huge mining advantage, but look at all those harvesters not being microed. Oh my god, that's thousands of credits per minute not coming in. He's just leaving them there. He doesn't notice. He's probably doing other things right now. But this is actually allowing for the Atreides to make a comeback, because he does use all his harvesters. But there are like 10 harvesters for the Harkonnen just sitting there, not doing anything at this at this uh, point of time. And that's 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 a setback for the Harkonnen. If he doesn't get them mining fast, it allows the Atreides to come back. It's dangerous. But why? Why does why does the Atreides player move his sonic tanks over the sand at Wormsign? Why, man? I'm thinking, why are you do that? And I'm actually commenting in that. Sure, he wants to beat the uh, the quads. Uh, you see all that massive splash damage being dealt. Uh, they're retreating like crazy. And that's a good thing to do. Why would you just throw them at their deaths? And funny thing is, you saw those uh, grey little uh, tanks and rocket turrets, uh, rocket launches underneath. Someone just called in a, a, a group of uh, mercs to attack. But I'm basically saying, don't move on worm sign, that's dumb, you shouldn't do that. Uh, he could also have lifted those sonic tanks with a uh, liftoff order, with a carry-all, and, and placed them uh, strategically, but he didn't. Now he does, you see? He just moves them a bit, which is something you need. It's a good thing to do. We'll just see how this plays out. I'm wondering... I still see those dots on the minimap. I think these harvesters will be a Harkonnen player are still not mining. And that's uh the Harkonnen player is Framer. That's a very noobish mistake. There goes another Sonic tank. Do not move on the sand. That's six hundred credits lost. That's almost a full mining uh trip. Here you go, Sonic tanks, bomb bomb bomb. They they are very, very good against heavier units, but also light infantry. They don't do anything special, but they have low hit points and it's uh it's splash damage. So uh, they will they will rip through infantry extremely fast, and these harvesters are still not mining. He, he could have made ten to twenty thousand credits in the meanwhile. And I'm actually com I, I'm making a note for myself now. What the fuck? I won't tell Harkonnen because he's leaning, but the mining time, lol, lost. Yeah, that's that's stupid. If those were all mining for the few minutes. 
he would have had a huge macro advantage, but he is stupid. Now he sees. Now he sees. But I didn't tell him because I wanted the Atreides a shot at coming back. And now I'm commenting, finally, finally, you you, you noob. OMG, Hark. Ha 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 ha. Or Harvey's. Atreides player doesn't even realize, but I do, and he knows now. He's done a stupid thing. And I'm telling them for five minutes, yeah. Always keep an eye out for mining ops. So important. And those little mercenaries there, you see the rocket launcher and the heavy tank sitting there? They will engage anything in sight. But And the Harkonnen is setting up a, uh, a push now. Um, setting up a siege more, more or less. Oh, he can move in any time. Um, not too sure if he actually will, but uh, we'll just find out later. Um, but the Atreus has uh, over a dozen uh, sonic tanks and chooses to get another construction vehicle, uh, a construction yard through an MCV, a mobile construction vehicle. So he has extra building capabilities. Every corn yard allows for another building to be built simultaneously. So now with three corn yards, he can build three buildings at a time, provided he has the credits to support the construction. But anyway, he is making a slight comeback. But also, he has harvesters not mining, though albeit it be just two. Still, always keep an eye on your harvesters. Plus, you also have a an, an icon, a harvester icon in the top, which you see next to the X Y indicator. Um, of course, I'm an observer, so I can't tell. But if you're playing, you can see exactly how many harvesters you have out of your max harvesters, which are determined by the amount of refineries you have, and if it, it also um, indicates if, if some are idle. <laughs> so you should always keep an eye out. Oh, that's funny. The the uh, Harkonnen player has definitely allied the Sardaukar faction. And he will he is now able to make Death Hand launchers. But they're really tricky. They can do a lot of damage, but the accuracy on their missiles is extremely poor. Uh, you would think in those techno technologically advanced factions that should not be an issue, but that's of course a gameplay choice because else it would be just like Command and Conquer, where you can drop a nu nuke with pinpoint precision and just win through sheer getting the nuke first. So that's that's good. It's more like a Sylvain always likes to call it a lottery ticket. It can go good or bad. <coughs> also, do not launch. Um, it also has a chance to fail on launching, exploding right on the spot where the launcher is at that point. So you can, uh, if you keep them close to each other, those those death hand launchers, and the first one you launch fails, you take out all the launchers next to it. But that's a word of advice I'm giving you. The Harkonnen is uh, poking with some quads, seeing, uh, trying to see if there's a weak spot where he can uh, just fly, uh, move in with some quads, take some pot shots at undefended buildings, see if he can take something down. But he's definitely sieging the Atreides, and the Atreides should sense that that he is under siege, and he's probably scared a bit. And the Arconan has a lot of troopers, and some Sardau car I just saw popped out, which are basically uh, uh, extra strong troopers with some extra range. <coughs> quite dangerous, quite dangerous to face, but he has a lot of sonic tanks, which are um, almost good against everything, but power issues are very dangerous. You sh I, I would say for every uh, for every six or five or six sonic tanks, you should have an... an Uh-oh, he's shooting his uh, race of sonic death through his, ho through his own base. Um, there's some smack talk going on, I'm trying to agitate the players. Oh, here goes all these sonic tanks firing at the heavy vehicles, which is really good. But you see the Devastators, they just one, almost one-shot these sonic tanks. But the ones that are on the dunes, you see these little dune graphic tiles? If you're on a dune, you have uh, damage resistance of 33%. So then he, they don't get one shot, but two shot. That's a good thing to do. But the Devastators are being taken down, but there's uh, still another group in the back. But the Atreides player, who's playing for the first time, again, I'm saying, 
is reinforcing his Sonics and the Harkonnen player is wisely backing out. But he's positioning his death hands closer to the enemy base. Um, you can't lift them off, so you have to drive them to the enemy. And the closer you are, the more of a chance... Oh, 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 that went wrong. He tried to launch there. And uh, like I explained earlier, you have a slight chance of detonating right on the spot. And if you don't spread them out, you can always l lose you can lose all your death hands. Um, which I'm explaining in the text right now for the uh, Harkonnen player. But uh, that's only 1500 credits. And he said I took a chance. Well, you should have spread them out, bro. That would have uh, allowed you to launch two more missiles and actually do damage. Noob. But enough about that. He he did his best. And uh, the play it, it's pretty fun to watch this. So I can point out the weaknesses, strengths and uh, the tips and tricks actually for playing. <coughs> but uh, the Atreides playing is, uh, player is going strong. Um, well, not strong, but reasonable. Reasonable. He's got some Sonic tanks, but he doesn't have any support units. If he were to tr throw, throw in a few combat tanks in the front, then he would have a better chance. And a rocket launcher is also a good counter versus uh, Sonic tanks. But Sonic tanks do splash damage. And the Sardaukar have quite quite some hit points, but all these waves of Sonic will cut through them. You see, there's a lot of casualties on the Harkonnen side, and do note that every Sardaukar trooper is 150 credits. So that's, if you have a group of three, that's that's 450 credits. And so every little corpse you see there is, is 150 credits lost, and the basic troopers are 100 credits. So, um, credit-wise, the Atreides player is winning this, but he has no reinforcements to replace those lost Sonic tanks. So even though he, he does manage to kill some troopers and some sort of car, or actually quite a few, and now the Harkonnen will definitely break through this defense. And I think that the Harkonnen will end this quite fast now. But that's for you to find out. Hup, taking a few more pot shots with the, with the Sonic tank. Taking down the radar outpost, that's never good. Because uh, now he has no radar. Boom, there, there you go, there you go. You see, the, as soon as the, tra uh, the troopers in Sardaukar, or any infantry for that matter, uh, go on the cracks, the little uh, hard rock formations, they get, a, they get an extra range bonus. Um, this, is, this is not looking good for the Atreides player. Too, too few tanks, too few support units, and too many buildings being lost. But the Harkonnen is also losing a lot of units to worms. You see all those devastators? Rom nom 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 nom. They get pulled back by the worm. So even if you're on the uh, if you're on a cell that is uh, on the edge of the sand, the worm can still get you. So keep that in mind. That's a fun fun little mechanic. I like that. It's just just something else. If you don't pay attention, you will lose extra units. That's punishment for you right there. But um, let's not forget the extreme advantage the Harkonnen has. Now he's dropping in a. Uh, a devastator, so they can just one-shot some more uh, sonic tanks, because that, that's basically what it is. And he's ripping through the through the Atreides bases now. Uh, oh, there goes the high-tech factory, so those carryalls you just saw uh, flying out have to find another place to live. But that's okay, There, I know there's another HTF. But, uh, hmm, this is bad, this is bad. The Atreides player is definitely on the losing side. They're still going strong. 28 minutes into the game. This is our f longest recording ever, and that's why I'm uh, I'm casting this because it's long, and I like long videos. And you can just uh, have a look at it. And there go some more worms. Uh oh, note that every devastator lost is is more than one returned harvester because it's 800 credits extremely expensive and the worms are having a go they're having a frenzy probably saying hey look worms there's harkonnens here we can eat them nom 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 yeah some random stuff like that and seeing that all these harvesters are waiting in their refineries indicates to me that he's at full credits that there are he's not even spending anything because uh, when your credits are full the overflow of spice is not 
discard it like in the original game, but they will just sit there until room is being made for new spice to be stored. So they'll, they'll just wait and wait and wait and wait. But that's that's just poor macro. You could just pump out a bunch of units, get an extra carry or two, whatever, anything to spend that money and keep the spice flow going, because this is bad. Oh, he, ju he, he just demolished his own palace and is rebuilding it, so he can... Um, I've heard the Rafi, one of our star players, commented, if you do that, you can just pick a new alliance without paying extra money. You can just switch for free without... And it doesn't disable the uh, the previous alliance. You can just re-ally re -ally your uh, faction of choice. There goes another sandstorm, resetting the resetting the vision vision of the uh, players. So the Harkonnen now cannot see the base. He knows it's there and he knows it's weak. Just two sonic tanks. As soon as the GG comes, I'll just uh, uh, stop the video. I know that for sure. LOL. 30 minutes now. Yes, it's going really fast. My coffee is cold already. The coffee I set, I made 30 minutes ago. It's now chili. It's chili coffee. It's like a ice latte. Latte frappe or something like that. But um, they should just finish it. The Arconan player now should just attack stop the Atreides player from suffering, submit him into a defeat, and then slander him, talking about how bad he was, and, and how superior the Harkonnen is. Because that they're arch enemies, right? The Harkonnen and the Atreides, they don't like each other very much. Um, I know for a fact that the Harkonnen would love to wipe out all the Atreides. That, that's just how evil they are. That's, that's what it says in the description. When you pick a house in the original game, the evil Harkonnen, the evil Harkonnen, and the noble Atreides. So the Atreides would not do that. No. Th they wouldn't return the favor. They would probably try to force democracy on the Harkonnen world. But that's not really um, something that we need to discuss here in this video. But Boom, one shot. Boom, one shot. You see that stuff? If he were to place them on the dunes, on the sand, that is, the little rippled tiles, they would need two shots. Uh, occasion occasionally a shot misses. That That's due to accuracy. So then it also takes two shots, but boom, one shot. You see that? When his cooldown finishes, another shot. Boom. Bye-bye, Sonic Tank. And the Harkonnen is reinforcing with carryalls, you see, you can also lift your military units and drop them in. Bye bye. Here come some units, some devastators, that, which deal enormous damage with their weapon, but also can self-destruct. If you can lift a devastator in between those little buildings and you press de uh, detonate, they will take out s uh, a lot of buildings. And, uh, it's GG now. I'm going to stop recording. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.